Hello everyone and welcome back to Neptune's Child Tarot. Thank you guys so much for being here. For those of you that are new to my readings, this is my second tarot channel here on YouTube. My main tarot channel is Moon Moth Goddess, where I do have a bunch of other readings and a playlist. If this reading does resonate for you today, I encourage you to check out my main channels page. I will have the link down below for you guys. So today's pick a card reading, we are actually doing one that is focused on what your higher self's message to you is on healing your shadow. Okay, so the shadow aspect um, of yourself. Um, and for those of you who don't really know what your shadow is, your shadow is going to be the part of you that I would say that the most way you can recognize this is the, that part of yourself that has negative qualities. You know, we all have a shadow. We have our light side, which is more of the positive parts of us, personality, characteristics, you know, who we are. And then we also have that shadow side of us that isn't so uh, great at times, especially when we feel triggered, depending on, uh, you know, what we've gone through, what kind of an upbringing we've had, our childhood, uh, situations that we may have gone through uh, within our life. So that can be the part of you that is expressed sometimes in a very negative way. And sometimes we can have difficulties and challenges with being able to not so much suppress it, but to really shed light on it, on why it may be kind of revealing itself in certain situations and how we can have better type of control over that. So this is going to be your higher self's uh, message to you on healing your shadow, especially for those of you that are actually focused on doing the inner work, the inner child healing, you know, focusing on bringing balance uh, on that shadow aspect of yourself so that you don't really allow the shadow to kind of overtake you as a person, right? You want to make sure that you're in a really balanced energy. And so shadow work is a great way to kind of shed light, like I said, on those negative aspects or qualities um, certain fears that we may have, you know, certain characteristics that we have as part of our personality um, that can sometimes have a negative impact on our communication um, and even the way that we feel about ourselves, right? Um, so, like I said, three uh, piles, we're going to be doing your higher self's message on healing your shadow. Pile number one, you are going to be this card here, which is vision. Pile number two, you are going to be this card here, which is treasure. Pile number three, this is going to be your card here, which is dream. So if you do feel called to more than one pile, that is perfectly okay. Whatever you feel, uh, messages that your higher self may have to you about healing this shadow aspect um, of yourself. So do whatever you feel uh, called to the most. We are going to be shuffling the piles for you guys um, on camera. But for those of you that want to, that already kind of know which one you feel drawn to, the timestamp will be down below to take you straight to the reading. Um, but for the rest of you, you can just keep on watching and we are going to put the piles together for you guys, for those of you like that like to uh, watch that process. Um, so timestamps will be down below um, and I will see you at your reading. Hey guys, so those of you that like to watch this process of uh, me putting the piles together for you guys, we are gonna be starting off with our tarot and then we do have some oracle decks that we are going to um, add into these piles as well. So let's, actually get started with the tarot first and we're going to do a quick shuffle on these so our focus for this reading is your higher self's message about healing your shadow okay 
So we're gonna get two of these um, and then we'll go into the other tarot deck and get three of those. So pile number one, those of you that chose vision or feel called to vision, let's look. I'm gonna put your pile together. Actually, all of them at once. Well, <laughs> we're gonna start off with pile one, so let's see. What is pile number one's message from their higher self about healing their shadow? Okay, so there's one. What is pile one's higher self message to them about healing their shadow? Okay, so pile two. What is your higher self's message about healing your shadow? Okay, and then pile three. Those of you that chose the dream. What is pile three's higher self message to healing their shadow? Okay, so now let's go into the other tarot deck and we'll grab three of these. And those of you that are wanting to know uh, what decks I am using, I always list the decks in the description box, both the tarot and the oracle cards. Okay, so pile one, what is your higher self's message to you about healing your shadow? number one's message from their higher self about healing their shadow. Okay, so let's do pile two. And then we'll do one more for pile two and then pile three. What is your higher self's message to you about healing your shadow? One more and then we will be moving on to the oracle cards. Okay. So let's start with this one here. So pile number one, what is your higher self's message to you about healing your shadow? Let's put that one back in there. We don't want you guys to see them. We want to make sure that you're choosing with your intuition. So just one card for pile number one. What is their higher self's message? This one right here. Pile number two, what is your higher self's message to you about healing your shadow? Okay, pile three. Your higher self's message to you about healing your shadow. 
It's just one. I'll take that one. Okay. So back to pile one here. What is your higher self's message to you about healing your shadow? Pile two. And pile three. Let's do four of these. To pile one, higher self's message to pile one about healing their shadow. Let's do one more for pile one. Okay, so pile two. Your higher self's message for healing your shadow. This is also my personal deck that I created, the Divine Intelligence Oracle. So those of you that feel drawn to this, I do have the link uh, for you guys. It's available for international purchase. There's this, uh, an ordering uh, website directly from the printer. Um, and those of you that are uh, in the US, I do have it available on Etsy as well. Get one more for pile two, and then pile three. Pile three, what is your higher self's message to you about healing your shadow? message from their higher self about healing their shadow. That will be for pile one, pile two, and then pile number three. Okay. I'll do three of these. Pile number three, what is your higher self's message to you about healing your shadow? Okay, pile two your higher self's message towards healing your shadow. There's one. For pile two. And let's do pile three. What is your higher self's message to you? about healing your shadow. Sometimes I wonder how many of you guys actually watch this, <laughs> watch this part. Um, I know some of you like to go straight to the reading, but then some of you are like, like to watch this part, but I wonder how many, is it just one of you or is, is there more people? Okay, so I'll do one of these. Or am I just talking to myself here, <laughs> you know? So pile one. What message does your higher self have for you about healing your shadow? There's one. Pile two. Pile three. 
two. And then pile three. What is your message from your higher self about healing your shadow? And then we've got one left. Number one, what is your higher self's message to you about healing your shadow? Pile two. And then pile number three. Let's do that one. Okay. So we've got all of your oracle cards. Oh no. All of your oracle cards. Hopefully you guys didn't see that. I might have to edit that a little bit. I don't want you guys to see them. I want you to really choose with your intuition. Okay. So pile one. I don't know. Let's just put this like that. And then pile number two. pile number three like that okay so piles are together now so pile number one this is going to be your pile here with the card that you have chosen uh, vision pile number two you are going to be the card treasure with this pile here and then pile number three, you are going to be the dream card with this pile here. So after looking at these, feel the one that you feel the most intuitively drawn to. Um, the one that calls you the most, like I said, for some of you, it could be that you feel drawn to maybe two piles or maybe even all of them. So it's really up to you how you want to uh, work with this reading today, okay? So messages from your higher self about healing your shadow. Um, Timestamps will be down below. But if you chose pile number one, this will roll right into that. And I will see you at your reading. Hi, pile one. So those of you that resonated with the vision card, this is going to be your reading. I'm actually going to move this out of the way. And let's put this over here. And we'll look at your cards today. Why is this dark? Oh my goodness. Okay, there we go. So we're going to look at your oracle cards. And our reading today is your higher self's message on healing your shadow. So let's actually look at tarot. going to do these last okay so let's put these here okay so let's look at the tarot we have the two of cups is what we're starting off with i painted this last night and i was like oh my i was waiting for it to dry and i don't know maybe it's a little bit tacky still because the cards are like sticking to it we have the five of wands we have the Ace of Pentacles. We have the Hierophant. And then we also have the Ten of Pentacles. Okay. So I'm already kind of getting some messages here. And I feel like a big part of this for many of you is going to be involving uh, family. Family uh creating conflict and the conflict can even be something that's happening uh within you uh and also external to you in the way i feel like that your shadow is kind of uh manifesting um into your life okay so we'll talk about that in a second but we also have meditation here we have card number 38 with clear away old energies we have 
anonymous and it says masked hiding and also secret surveillance wow secret surveillance this almost makes me feel like there's like this deceptive energy and i wonder if this is like family family here or you know who knows maybe it could be you we'll see when we get into this we also have card number 46 with the night ride i think i'm gonna have to move these down um so i can fit this in here okay and then we also have vision and you guys chose vision too so maybe there's something something about that in particular that let's actually put this up here that spirit is saying something about this here so we'll look at these energies first and then we'll kind of move uh into these um as well but yes the the kind of feeling that i'm getting here about okay your higher self's message on healing your shadow and i feel like a lot of this has to do with your beliefs okay um for those of you i just i think it was on friday friday this past friday what was that the 10th 11th 11th i think it was 11 11 11 i think i did a reading on um how your beliefs are holding you back from your greatest potential so that may also be a reading um, that you guys want to check out, especially for those of you that chose this pile and are aware that the belief systems that you carry are ones that are reflected within your shadow. That might be a good reading um, for you um, as well. Okay. But yeah, I'm feeling you do have the Hierophant here. You also have the Five of Wands. And the Hierophant is about wisdom, knowledge, higher learning, and all of this wisdom and knowledge is something that is gained through our experiences, right? It, the uh, society's beliefs, values, belief systems. In this case, I feel like a lot of this has to do with uh, family, okay? Because we do have the 10 of pentacles here, which is a family card, okay? It's also a card of abundance and wealth and things of that nature. Um, but for some of you, it can be that there are a sh there are shadow aspects of yourself, um, that are revolving around your belief systems. And I do feel like with the 10 of pentacles being here for many of you, this is something that is generational, something, you know, that may have been passed down from, uh, parents, uh, even grandparents, uh, ancestral, which can even go way further back, <laughs> Uh, with that um, because I'm seeing the five of wands here and the five of wands I'm feeling for some of you there can be this very competitive energy and this may be causing like I said I feel like it's affecting your shadow comes out with family and also maybe even friendships and romantic relationships okay because that five of wands energy is talking about conflict disagreements uh, tension stress um, so it may be that family members or even romantic partners are really triggering, uh, these shadows within you. And the five of wands to me could be that you are someone who at times, okay, like I said, our shadow is something we're not always proud of. It's not always something that's very pretty, you know, but it is a part of us. It is, it is who we are. And the goal for us is, is to not allow our shadow to kind of, like I said, overtake our energy as a whole. So we become someone who just kind of sits in that negative energy at times. We want to kind of balance that with the positive aspects of who we are, right? Not always the ones that are, you know, created by the negative aspects, I would say, like of the ego, right? So I am seeing the five of wands here, and I feel like that could be a little bit of the problem that your higher self is wanting to talk about with you because the five of wands this can be the energy of competition right and let's just say that you're not the only uh child in a family and you're someone who has siblings okay maybe even for some of you i'm getting i could have been having family 
parents who were very busy working right very busy working and it could have been that you feel like you had to compete or in a way kind of struggle for attention right maybe if there's two family members or even one family member that was working and very busy and you felt like you didn't have the attention that you may have needed the nurturing i'm seeing how this little owl here is like kind of cuddling um it's it's baby here right and so maybe you felt like you didn't have that so i'm getting for some of you that is that type of energy i'm also getting competitive even because this five of ones can even be between siblings okay sibling rivalry um some of you may get very defensive as part of your shadow side where you can get maybe very easily irritated angry feeling that you have to kind of um uh, protect yourself, right? Which is kind of what I feel here. And that, like I said, it can be something that is manifesting into your um, emotional connections, bonds that you have with your friends, with romantic partners, um, family members is, is a big thing here with that 10 of pentacles. Okay. Um, what I'm also getting here is because we do have uh, 10 of pentacles and also the ace of pentacles, I feel like some of your shadow is also something that is affecting your, maybe even your connection to um, your abundance, your ability to manifest, um, your belief even in yourself, okay? Um, I feel like your higher self's message to you, though, is to really kind of take a look at what belief systems you hold, maybe surrounding, forming connections, um, expression of feelings and emotions towards friends, romantic partners, and also about you finding balance, I feel like within yourself, harmony from within could be something that your higher self is wanting you to focus on how, right, how to heal the shadow and to really kind of take a look at what things external to you, like, like I said, some of you, it's friends, romantic partners, and family, okay? Uh, surrounding you. So take a look at those connections, those bonds um, that you have with people and how you may feel a little bit challenged, let's just say by another person's personality, or maybe there's something about them that has belief systems that are very different than yours, right? That can also be something that can raise conflict uh, within us. So I feel like spirit staying here with the ace of pentacles with what your higher self is to really kind of focus on new beginnings, right? And that could even be stepping outside the box and changing the way that you may have always done things, right? But yeah, I'm, I'm feeling this huge energy uh, surrounding family and a lot of those triggers of the shadow <laughs> You know, it could be that you have like a parent, uh, a mother, a father, uh, a grandparent, a sibling, a friend, a certain friend who you just feel this energy. And for some of you, like I said, where there is sibling rivalry, it could be that your higher self is wanting you, like I said, to take a look at what your values, your beliefs are. Um, and if these are still something that are, you feel like are serving you, right? Because we do have this card here that says clear away old energies, right? So I feel like with the anonymous here, and it says mask hiding and also secret surveillance here. Uh, some of you, I'm getting that this is a family member right? You may feel kind of deceptive energy from a person, a romantic partner, a friend, a family member. And that can be something that creates that kind of like, I want to fight. Like and there's tension, there's stress, there's a challenge, there's changes that need to be made, right? Within the, within the uh, beliefs here. Like I said, the Hierophant is about knowledge. So I feel like your higher self is wanting you to really focus on what lessons you've learned, right? From these experiences that you've had. And for some of you, 
with the mask and hiding care and secret surveillance, some of you may feel like there is someone surrounding you, either a family member, a friend, an ex-friend, a romantic partner that is a little deceptive. And it could be that you, maybe even for some of you, because I'm seeing a little mask here, it could even be that you are someone who I feel like even tries to hide the shadow, right? Suppress it. And I feel like for some of you, your higher self is wanting you to bring that shadow to light, bring it to the surface so that you can really clear it and release it, right? Because some of you may feel like, like I said in the, in the, in, in the intro today, sometimes we try to push that part of ourself away, right? Um, and we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't try to suppress anger. We shouldn't try to suppress resentment or jealousy or, you know, some negative aspect of ourself. It is really about you bringing it to light so that you can really focus on healing it. And I'm noticing that you have vision here twice. So I do feel like I'm noticing that her third eye um, is open. She's also got a crown here. So to me, healing your shadow for some of you is going to be something that will help to clear, I feel like, blockages that you have in your third eye as well as your crown. And both of these um, crown chakra or your both of these chakras, the third eye and the crown chakra, are ones that are very important for us to connect to our higher self. Okay, because the third eye is our intuition our inner knowing, it is the way that spirit uses to communicate with us, and our crown chakra is literally at the top of our head, it is our connection to source, to spirit, okay? So when we have blockages here, right, that are being blocked out by that imbalanced energy within our shadow, stag stuck, stuck or stagnant energy, right, that is even stored in the lower chakras, um, that can create that disconnect for us, right? So this is where your higher self is saying, hey, <laughs> hey, it is time to focus on healing the shadow, right? No more trying to mask it. No more trying to hide it. Um, some of you I get also with the secret surveillance here and the five of wands. It almost makes me feel, and I feel like this is probably a result of trauma, okay? For some of you, a result of trauma or even a certain upbringing that you may be hyper vigilant when it comes to letting people close to you. It could be that you are someone who, because of your history, your past, that you may kind of find yourself in situations where you feel like you cannot trust people, um, that you feel like people don't have the best intentions towards you and all well, that might be true, right? Some of you that know for a fact that there is a specific person who is, you know, vindictive or deceptive around you. But sometimes that can be our own hypervigilance to uh, certain people or situations where we feel like we need to constantly be on guard and not trust people and kind of super aware, right? Super aware, hypersensitive to people's behaviors and kind of noticing every single thing, right? The tone in their voice, the way that they say things. And that's just kind of what this is giving to me, the secret surveillance. Some of you may feel like the people that you surround yourself with, that you may have a little bit of a time kind of letting uh, that guard down, okay? So that's what I'm getting here as... Uh, for you as well and then we have meditation here and meditation I feel like this is one of the messages from your higher self about helping to heal it right meditation practice may be something that is very beneficial to you for you to be able to clear right that energy clear those blockages or even take some time to think about how you can really focus on bringing balance to that uh, shadow aspect of the self right because that's really a time for quiet reflection, introspection uh, during this time. And it could be something, like I said, for some of you, where the shadow is something that your higher self is really wanting you to focus on healing and releasing things from the past, okay? Um, 
And I also feel with the vision here, I'm noticing there's, where is there? I thought I saw, oh yeah, we've got two L's here. We also have two L's here. And then we have the two of cups to me. I mean, we have the two of cups here. So to me, this is this balance, right? This balance here. And I'm noticing that the owls are white and the elephant is dark, which to me is the light and the shadow. This is where your, your higher self is really kind of stressing the importance of shedding light on that aspect of the self. Um, I feel like it's particularly important for you because I feel like many of you that chose this pile are super, super intuitive. Um, and this is like, I feel like, uh, your higher self kind of stressing the importance of you being someone I feel like who's meant to really use your gifts, your spiritual gifts, your intuition, right? And being able to balance out the shadow could be something that really opens up your intuition even more probably than some of you are intuitive right now. Um, I generally feel like pile number ones with pretty much the readings that I do here on this channel, as well as the readings that I do on my Moon Moth Goddess channel. A lot of you, I feel like, are my intuitives and healers and you know, tarot readers, um, people that have that regular practice of really evolving, ascending um, spiritually. So that's kind of where I'm feeling here that, you know, it's, it's, it's like super important for you, your path. And I feel like many of you with the um, discard here and the Hierophant, many of you are meant to be uh, teachers, um, helping, I feel like, other people right? You being the person who can take a look at your family line, your relationships, and change things up in a way. It's almost like in a way your higher self's message to you is about healing this generational or ancestral line. Like to me, like this is your whole purpose. I feel like in this lifetime is to be able to clear that energy, right? And no longer be someone who may be from romantic partners, friends, family members, no longer for you to be that person who does not have self-awareness, right, about your shadow. And so by you, instead of hiding it, rather expressing it in a healthy way, recognizing when it is something that does come up in a maybe a little bit of a negative way that you're aware of that, right? You're aware of it. You're aware of when your shadow is, let's just say out of control, <laughs> you know, out of control. It may be acting, um, making you act out of character for yourself. Let's just say if you're someone who's pretty like, um, even tempered type of person, right? Very nice. Um, very kind. Um, and then when somebody really, really upsets you, you know, or you get triggered or something like that, um, it could be that you turn into someone very different, right? Because of things that you've gone through from the past, you could be someone who does, right? Um, prepare to fight, prepare to challenge, but, but I feel like doing it in a way that may be very different um, than people in your family line. And so, yeah, I am definitely feeling here that this is a, and I almost, it just makes me feel like some of you are surrounded by energies of people who are not so self-aware, right? Are not so self-aware of their shadow and how it could be something that's impacting your friendships, connections, relationships, and things like that. So it's really, I feel like super important for you, pile number one, and to be someone who's not afraid of it, right? It is a part of you. Like I said, it is a part of all of us. Um, and it is really about us facing it. What is our shadow teaching us, right? To me, like I said, with the Harfa energy, it's all about knowledge and wisdom that we're gaining um, through this, right? Conflict that we feel within ourselves, conflict that we're experiencing in our external environment. So it's like no more masking it, no more hiding it, shed light on it. 
and bring it to the surface for you to be able to heal, try to understand, right, the reasons why the shadow is, is making its appearance, right? Is it trying to tell you something about yourself? Are you seeing that your shadow is being reflected back to you through the experiences that you're going through with family members, with friends, with romantic partners, right? How is it challenging you, right? And for some of you, it could be that maybe you've been feeling a lot of your shadow kind of side coming out. I feel like I want to do um, another reading too for you guys that is focused on your shadow for those of you that maybe don't have an idea. Like, I don't have a shadow, you know? I don't know. I don't have one of those. But we're going to, I think, I feel like I want to kind of dig into that too, right? So we can be aware of where we may need to work on ourselves, right? And how it holds us back. Um, and then we have the knight right here, right? And this one is about um, friendships, bonds. It can even be, like I said, a sibling. It's kind of what I'm getting with that five of wands um, energy too, right? It's And then you look at how the, the mother owl here is protecting um, the baby here, okay? So this card is actually from the Oracle of uh, Mystical Moments. So I'm going to read to you guys with this message. Um, says here and it says an elephant transports two owls on his back a mother and her young bird child protectively she has folded her wing over the young owl's head the elephant rides through the night blowing stars up into the sky through his trunk connected with magic and wonder the elephant is a protector a strong shoulder to lean on in all times even during dark times you can feel safe and secure uh, beside him Right. So in a way, like I said to me, symbolically, the white owls being the light energy, the light side of us. And then this big elephant here. For some of you, you know, to me, I said, this is the shadow. And I noticed that also the size difference in this, the size. OK, we have these little white owls here and this huge elephant. So to me. This can be that your higher self is letting you know that maybe there is a little bit of an imbalance here, right? Are you, is there a lot of this shadow energy that is kind of in a way overshadowing the light energies within you? How can you bring more balance to that, right? I feel like your higher self is wanting you to know because this is also talking about feeling safe and secure is that you don't have to try to suppress, right? Especially if you're someone, <clears throat> I'll say this, you are someone who finds yourself in conflicting or even very challenging situations with romantic partners, with family members, with siblings. And you are the person who tries to like keep the peace, put the mask on, I'm not gonna say anything, I'm not gonna do anything, and this is more so for you to not try to suppress your shadow to the point, or it can even be that you're on the other side of that, where the shadow is just like out there, right? Out there, um, where you don't uh, suppress it any longer, right? You don't let people, in a way, for some of you, um, what was I trying to go with that? Like not suppressing or repressing your, like, let's just say if you get angry, right? You get angry because someone says something or someone does something uh, and, and you just let it slide, right? Are you really honoring your own feelings, your own emotions, right? How can that kind of throw you out of balance here? Yeah, so to me, with the mask and the hiding and the mask just sitting here, it's like, in a way, spirit saying, don't hide it anymore, right? Don't try to hide this part of yourself. If you're mad and you're angry, tell someone, right? Let that person know. This can be something that also strengthens your bonds, your friendships, your communication, right? Um, those of you that like to people please, people pleasers, right? We don't want to say the wrong thing. We don't want to create conflict. We, some of you may like try to avoid conflict altogether with that five of wands, right? 
Um, and that can really kind of create this within yourself, right? There can be resentment that hides in here, right? If you have it towards a family member, a romantic partner, friend, you've got all this built up energy in here, right? That is leading to maybe grudges and resentment and anger and hurt feelings that weren't really addressed there, right? So clear away old energies for some of you it can even be that there is past situations that you have not released things that you're still holding on to. And because of that, it is something that is creating that imbalance within the shadow. Okay, that imbalance there. So I want to look at, I've just got incense all over this card. I want to look at this um, vision card because I'm feeling maybe there is some kind of significance here with you having vision here twice. So I want to see... And this one is from the Archetypes, um, Wild Unknown Archetypes Oracle. And I want to see, let's see. Okay, so you have vision here and it says the dream, the imagined, and the revealed. It says, it is said that we are each born with a unique vision, a destiny towards which we are aimed. It is also said that we forget this vision the moment we are born. Thus, we are sent on a lifelong journey of rediscovery. Such is the elusive nature of the vision. It slips away, yet it guides. It appears in strange dreams and surreal images, seemingly unattainable and preposterous. When we are connected to the vision, we carry an inspired, enchanted aliveness that others recognize. We trust the world and its synchronicities. We walk through new doors into wondrous opportunities. We all want to be near those with vision. They emit energy more potent than any elixir. When we lose connection to the vision, life becomes dull and exhausting, lacking meaning. Bring back the mystery. Bring back the dreams. Okay? Some of you may even be, like, very clairvoyant. Um... I feel like as well, right? So to me, it's like, kind of like I said, I feel like even just looking at this, it, it makes me feel like your higher self is really kind of trying, trying to stress the importance of you bringing that balance to the, to the shadow, healing it, not trying to suppress it, not trying to, you know, push it away and pretend it and ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist, Right? Because it is all about honoring those feelings, those emotions, and kind of getting to the root of what those issues are so that you can address them, right? So that you don't have that imbalance of the shadow kind of creeping in and taking over who you are, right? Yes, both very much a part of us, the shadow and the light, but bring balance to it, right? Just the same way in which we shouldn't um, kind of go too much into the light energy in that we never feel like anything is a problem or negative or what is that toxic positivity right toxic positivity so we have to you know we're we're here on earth we're all going through challenges lessons uh things of that nature and you know it's like do we continue to try to be agreeable and passive and not address those darker parts of ourself, right? It, it's like kind of like, you know, telling someone who you are and I feel like leaving out a lot of pertinent information about who you are as a person or, or like someone, like you tell a person your name and they're like, okay, well, I know you. No, you don't. No, you don't. Right? There's so much more to you than just this light side. There's also your shadow. Right? So I definitely feel it's like Spirit saying here, your higher self is to nurture it. Right? Take care of it. Protect it. Protect yourself. Protect your own energy. Maybe this for some of you is setting boundaries. Right? Setting boundaries with family members or friends. And, you know, maybe there is a need for. Uh, defending yourself around certain people, 
right? A need for sticking up for yourself, a need for, you know, or like I said, if you are someone who kind of allows that shadow to kind of go overboard, right? Acknowledge it, accept it, accept that part of yourself of who you are and try to honor the feelings that are behind it, right? Why am I acting jealous right now? Why am I acting controlling right now? Because the Hierophant is also about um, tradition and order. And sometimes those values and belief systems that other people hold can also be very dogmatic in nature. They can be restrictive, right? So how are those beliefs, are they blocking you from being able to embrace, right? Nurture the shadow versus healing that because society, right? Because this is about societal norms, values, belief systems um, of other people, right? If other, another person sees your shadow and you're like, oh no, I can't show my shadow because then this person's going to think that I'm mean or I'm angry or that you become very, like I said, a very passive person, right? Who doesn't speak up, who doesn't use your voice. Um, so yeah, to me, that is maybe even for some of you who try to suppress it, right? Who try to suppress the shadow and, and pretend like it's not there, it's not there, but then it creeps out, right? So to me, that is also about you finding that here as well. Um, okay, so the other little message with this says, you can gauge how connected you are to your vision by how tired you are. Since the vision feeds us energy, it affects our life force and uh, vitality. And it says when it's in its light aspect, we have potent imagination, synchronicity, and we trust. When it's in its shadow or the dark, it says we're disconnected from art. We're disconnected from our dreams. We feel listless. We feel aimless, right? That means basically we're disconnected from source, right? We're not able to navigate through our life. We have no direction, right? Um, it also says, look at art you loved when you were young. Listen to old records and poems. These are all ways to activate the vision, right? So to me, in a way, talking about this card, it's like you're... you're connecting to a part of yourself that you may feel disconnected from or you try to disassociate from, right? And the Two of Cups is all about finding that balance from within, both shadow and light, right? Not allowing it, like I said, to kind of take over completely and not trying to just kind of pretend that we're all love and light and no shadow, right? Denying a part of ourself. And so that's where Spirit is saying, Bring balance and harmony from within so that you are able to clear this, keep this channel clear and open, right? Like I said, I feel like for many of you, you have really important missions, I feel like, within your life. And I feel like you're, for many of you, you're meant to teach, uh, guide others. And that is something that you need to kind of keep this clear channel open because you are someone who's incredibly intuitive. And so balancing out your energy is super important for your path there's also i feel like a need for emotional release here as well i'm seeing how these both of these cups here have the water that's kind of dripping out of them um some of you can even be working with the moon the moon cycles okay important moon cycles to be able to release and even clear that you know working on the shadow which is perfect maybe when um you know, especially with us just having had a uh, an eclipse, right? Okay, so let's look at the other cards that you have here. You have creativity. We have divine timing. And then you also have healing energy. Okay, yeah, so... I'm getting with this healing energy here too. I'm seeing there's this little hand um, in here. So some of you, this can be uh, working on energy work. Some of you could even be uh, Reiki uh, practitioners or Reiki may be something that is very helpful for you. You can't just do Reiki though and expect that your shadow is going to be balanced, okay? It's about also doing the inner work, 
right? Doing the inner work, um, which you can do like little exercises, right? Take a piece of paper out. Think about what are those shadow aspects of yourself, right? Are you someone who can be, let's just, I'm just going to use this as an example. Um, somebody who's greedy, somebody who holds grudges, somebody who's resentful, somebody who has, um, let's just see, somebody who's dishonest, somebody who uh, is heartless, cruel, right? These are all those shadows, right? Those shadow aspects of ourself, right? So we have to actually deep dive into the self, reflect, meditate, right? Clear the mind, you know, take that time and do the work. Yes. Like I said, Reiki is, is a beautiful, beautiful thing, but we can't expect that that Reiki energy is going to be something that's going to, you know, be it, right? The, the solution that, oh, I'm just going to go get a Reiki session and it's going to be good. You know, we have to actually do the work. Yes, it's excellent at helping to get energy to kind of move through and flow and blockages and things like that. But we need to change that within our minds too, right? We need to change that within our mind, the way that we perceive such that certain situations. Spirit is saying here, values, beliefs, right? How are those beliefs creating limitations for us and creating challenge for us? Changes that we need to reflect upon to create with the Ace of Pentacles here, a new beginning, right? So we can move forward with balanced, harmonious friendships, family situations here as well. Um, with the creativity here, I feel like Spirit is saying here to kind of release. I'm seeing again how the water is kind of flowing out of the cups. Self-love, right? Self-love can be something that's also very needed for you um, here as well. And because we have creativity here, um, to me, this is a lot of the feminine energy, right? So, uh, and that could either be uh, a need for healing, uh, healing the feminine, but is the feminine energy suppressed, right? Is it wounded to kind of let that creativity flow? Right? To me, that's a lot of that balance that's happening there as well. And also with divine timing here, um, I feel like there's, like I said, I just kind of feel like important things for you to accomplish. I feel like many of you are meant to be very successful financially, wealth, and this can also be something that's in very important for you to be able to heal and bring that shadow into balance. So that you are able to also, maybe there's belief systems around money, around abundance, right? If you're constantly living in fear or doubt, right, about yourself, your own abilities, those can also be things that are blocking things there as well with the shadow, right? Living in fear, living in doubt, not trusting the intuition, right? So kind of affecting you as a whole. So the divine timing here, I feel like Spirit's saying here, trust the way in which things are kind of playing out you know, within your life, with family members, with friends, with romantic partners, because it could be that all of these things and experiences that you're going through in which you're being met with challenge or conflict within or with your external environment are happening for a reason, right? It could be that there are a specific family member that's triggering, right? Triggering your shadow. Pay attention to that. Acknowledge that. Journal about it, right? Why did I feel in that moment that my shadow was going to be like, you know, jumping down someone's throat or, you know, what, whatever it be. So be, being mindful, right? More mindfulness. Okay, so let's look at these last four. We have the heart chakra. Okay, heart chakra here. So that's to me with healing the shadow. Maybe there are some things that are blocked there, right? And the heart chakra is right at the center, right at the center here, right? We've got the crown, the third eye, we have the throat chakra, we have the heart, we have the solar plexus, and then we also have the sacral and the root chakra. The heart being right at the center, when that heart has blockages, right? And spirit is trying to give us these messages, these downloads, you know, things, that energy is not gonna be able to come through, right? That is the, the main hub, the main center. And I'm also noticing that in this heart chakra card here, this looks like a butterfly, right? To me, it's like your higher self is saying here, if you transform any of the pain or uh, blocked, repressed feelings and emotions that you're holding within the throat, or not the throat, the uh, heart chakra, 
Um, maybe it is throat for some of you too. Using your voice, finding your voice, speaking up, right? Especially when there is conflict. Or it could even be when the throat chakra is even over kind of going, meaning that you could be someone who gets angry and at people, at friends, at friends, and maybe there's like a little bit of an aggressive energy that kind of comes out as your shadow, okay? Um, but yeah, I feel like healing the heart chakra is going to be something that helps you to really balance out the shadow too, because it could be, well, let's just say that you are someone, right? That your shadow shows up when you get mad and someone you're hurt, your feelings are really hurt. Um, I am, I'll just share this with you guys, just so you guys can understand the shadow, you know, a little bit more. We all going to have different ways that our shadow comes out, right? I, myself, I do not like conflict. I will avoid it at all costs. I don't like arguing and people yelling and I just don't like it. Okay. So I will be the type of person who, and I've recognized this about myself, you know, that I need to not do that. But I am the type of person to just try to stay away <laughs> and just like not have anything to do with conflict at all. So I've noticed that in my past that I used to be someone who became very passive with people who were more aggressive and saying certain things to me that I'm talking about friends that I've had in the past friends who would say certain things to me and I just let it slide right? Because I didn't like conflict. I don't like fighting. So if you, you want to say something to me, say it, go ahead, whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to think about it, but that created a lot of pain, right? And I am someone who, when I get upset, I cry, I cry instead of yelling and getting angry, right? I might raise my voice, but I end up crying because there's so much emotion that I feel I'm also an empath. So I feel everything very deeply. I feel the energy, right? Change. So it makes me cry. Um, but for some people, they can really hold all that in, right? And have really kind of blocked, uh, energy. So yeah, I feel like spirit saying here, your higher self is me the message to you is if you work on healing your heart chakra, right? The release, clearing away those old energies. And for some of you, it could be resentment, pain, um, suffering that you've experienced from your past, that this is where your higher self is saying, release those, work towards letting those go so you can bring that balance into the shadow. Look at that. We've got the throat chakra. So same thing, right? We can either be someone who doesn't speak up, doesn't use our voice, right? Or we can be that person who's very loud, very obnoxious, very uh, mean towards other people, aggressive, say nasty things, right? So you could be on either side of that, where you're someone who gets very easily irritated and you are the aggressor. You are the one who is like <laughs> saying stuff, right? To romantic partners and, and friends and, uh, family members where you are not going to deal with it at all, right? You're like, mm -mm, you're not going to talk to me like that. And just like, you know, so it can kind of be either way. You're either someone who kind of is on the side of it where you don't speak up at all. You don't say anything at all. So it ends up blocked here in the throat or in the heart chakra. Or you're someone who is hurt and angry and, you know, it's affecting the throat chakra in another way. Okay, so we have transcend karma. Okay, so to me, as your higher self message to you on healing your shadow is being able to transcend those karmic lessons like i said some of you it is with family romantic partners friends okay transcending those karmic lessons meaning we're changing our values we're changing our beliefs do they still hold value for us or are they holding us back right we can take a, a look at how we can change right um or even, like I said, for some of you having very conflicting values with another person, right? It's okay not to share the same values, but maybe this is also a time for you to kind of take a look at your, your friendships, at your romantic partners, at your family members. Are they toxic? Are you toxic, right? This is a time for us to really meditate and look at our, our self reflection, right? Um, we have acceptance here, okay? So for many of you, it can be accepting the shadow, 
right? Not trying to push it away, not trying to hide it, not trying to mask it and pretend that we're all love and light and we're all fluffy and, you know, um, uh, little angels, you know? It's like we have to acknowledge the shadow is there. The shadow is not going anywhere. It's a part of us, right? However, we don't have to allow it to be something that kind of overtakes our life. We can bring balance to it. We can accept you know, accept, hey, you know what? You made me upset. I'm angry, right? Use our voice, the throat chakra. Use our voice. Talk in a, in a way. Learn how to communicate in a, in a balanced, loving way from a place of love, right? From a place of compassion, you know, versus the other side of that, okay? So I'm going to leave it here for you. Pile number one. I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next reading. Hi, Patu. So for those of you that resonated with the treasure card, this is going to be your reading today. So we are looking into your higher self's message on healing your shadow. So let's take a look first at your uh, tarot. We have the seven of cups. We have the Mastery of Cups, which is the King of Cups. We have Liberation, which is the Judgment card. We also have Strength. And then we also have the Five of Pentacles. Okay, so let's take out a little bit of your Oracle. We do have guidance. We have move forward. Uh, let's save these. And these ones are later. We have the intangible. We have protective nest. And then you have the stone. And then we are going to save these until after we talk about these other cards that are here. Okay. So your higher self's message on healing your shadow. Okay. And uh, for those of you that may have missed it, I was talking a little bit in the intro um, about the shadow. And for those of you who don't really know what the shadow is, you know, it is that part of our self um, that can become triggered, you know, by, by certain people or, you know, just by certain things, depending on how we grew up, what kind of situations we've gone through. Um, and it can sometimes have a negative impact on us, you know, something that we kind of hold ourselves or we hold ourselves back because of some of those shadows, or it can even create issues with us with, you know, communicating, connecting, uh, with other people, regardless of who that person is, a friend, a coworker, uh, a, a romantic partner, um, or a family member, right? So, uh, your higher self's message on healing your shadow. The one thing that I'm noticing here, um, is five of pentacles and judgment. Okay. And I'm seeing that the keyword or the way that they call in this deck, um, judgment as liberation, which is essentially you becoming free and looking at how she's coming out of this flower here. She's got butterfly wings, um, almost like she's blooming out of this flower. Okay. So I feel like your higher self's message with regard to healing the shadow is to really kind of focus on forgiveness. Okay. In order for you to be able to move forward here. Because that five of pentacles could be something that is affecting uh, your mindset. It could be uh, because the five of pentacles is an energy of loss or void, despair, feeling some type of emptiness. Um, and for some of you, that five of pentacles can be abandonment, right? If you are someone who's, who's dealt with abandonment, either from childhood or something that you've experienced with a romantic relationship, maybe even a friend or a family member who's just kind of shut you out. There can also be fears of abandonment that you might have, right? Um, the card before the five of pentacles is the four of pentacles and the four of pentacles can be 
when we really kind of cling on to someone or something, right, out of fear of loss. And that loss is the five of pentacles. So like I said, for some of you, it could be that you do have part of your shadow, I feel like, could be something that is triggered by situations that make you feel that emptiness, that void, that despair, um, a sense of or a feeling of loss. You know, it could be that you feel that other people are going to push you away, right? And that can trigger many different things within us, right? If we feel like, let's just say we've gone through abandonment as a child, right? We had one of our parents that were missing or both parents that weren't available, whether they were physically present or not, you know, you can still have a parent that is present and feel emotionally neglected, right? Where you're not able, you could have parents that both worked all the time and, you know, you were home and didn't have someone to form that uh, bond with, right? It can also be something that you go through uh, in a romantic relationship where you feel like you're the person who's putting in all of the effort, all the work, and then a person just ends up ghosting you, blocking you, shutting you out, right? So it's basically feeling <clears throat> the energy of lack. We feel like our, our needs are not being met, right? So that can manifest in many different ways as far as how our, tr our shadow is being triggered. And so with strength also being here, <clears throat> this is about us being able to have the courage or you pile to, to have the courage to be able to face a lot of those more difficult, challenging uh, feelings and emotions and to really kind of shed light upon them and bring balance to them. Okay. Um, and I'm seeing that with the liberation being here or judgment, judgment is an opportunity for us to look back on our past and really kind of you know, see what kinds of burdens are we holding on to, what type of resentment, anger, pain. And so I feel like your higher self's message to you with being able to heal the shadow is to maybe kind of understand that maybe for some of you that chose this pile, the five of pentacles could be something that is, is maybe it's the root, right, of the issue. And so that judgment card is going to put you in a place where you look back on your past and that could be working on forgiveness towards another person. Um, it could even be a parent. We have the protective nest here. And this is a very um, nurturing, mothering uh, type of energy. So if you've been someone who was, let's just say, missing an emotional connection to a mother or even a father, it doesn't have to be. But this energy is about nurture. Um, and if you notice her, this lady here. She has this egg that she's protecting under her little feather dress. She's also got these uh, eggs in, in the nest that's on her head here as well, right? So this energy here is really talking about mothering, nurturing, and also for us to, you know, especially if you're someone that does have children, um, is really, I feel like spirit saying here, to really kind of watch the way in which... Uh, you communicate, right? You're working with the King of Cups energy here. You're working towards uh, being more loving, more nurturing, more compassionate, right? Just, which is something that we can all um, do, right? Within our life towards other people. But a lot of this, I feel like for many of you that may have had a childhood um, in which maybe there was a maternal figure, that was not able to, or to just did not, simply did not uh, uh, maybe protect you in the way that, you know, maybe, I don't want to say like, oh, it's all your mom's fault, you know, that, that there are certain things. However, we can feel that way. We can hold resentment. We can hold anger towards a parent for, you know, not feeling like our needs are being met. <clears throat> and to me, that's kind of what this energy is, is that, there is, or maybe a, a parental figure, right? It doesn't even need to be that it was your biological mother. It could have been um, a grandparent who raised you. <clears throat> and it's just about missing that uh, nurturing energy. And sometimes with the protective nest here, um, that can be about that need for, I feel like, 
having going through the experience where you had a parent who maybe didn't really pay attention or close attention to the way in which they may have said things, right? Because with this protective energy, it's about us understanding that as our children are small, still growing, still developing, we can have this impression on them, right? In a way, molding them because our own actions, and you'll understand this kind of like if you're a parent already, you understand that, you know, the way that we talk to communicate with our children can make an impact on them. And sometimes it is a, a huge impact, right? So if we're not protecting that child, um, nurturing, right, then it can be something that really affects the way that your child could, uh, I feel like maybe have those underlying feelings of emptiness or void, right? We have to pay close attention to what we say, how we say it, right? Because it can make a huge impact, especially because the first relationships that we have in life are that with our caregivers, right? Yeah, our, our maternal, uh, paternal figures that we have within our life, right? And if we don't have them, we feel that sense of loss. We, we don't feel grounded. We feel, we don't feel safe. We don't feel secure, right? So I feel like with the protective nest being here, some of you could have been in that situation where you had maybe um, a feeling like those needs weren't being met. Some of you could have been in toxic family situations where there was a lot of yelling, a lot of arguing, a lot of, you know, you feeling not heard, you know, by that. So that is, you know, something that you're taking with you, right? And when you go into forming adult relationships, you're bringing this energy with you into that, right? It can be very challenging. So I feel like where your higher self is saying to heal your shadow, right? The way in which your shadow is manifesting is for you to work on forgiveness, is to work on uh, releasing, right? Uh, judgment is about us, like I said, looking back on our past, you know, the different experiences that we've had and making peace with them so that we're not bringing that baggage with us into new cycles, right? We're, we're, we're learning the lessons. We're taking the love that we've had for a specific person. We're taking that and the lessons with us, leaving everything else in the past. Okay. So I'm feeling that because you also have the seven of cups energy here, this can sometimes be feeling very confused and overwhelmed sometimes emotionally. And I feel like a big part of your, your higher self wanting you to heal your shadow is to, from this approach of love, okay, compassion, empathy, and not so much that you need to have that for others, but for you to have that for yourself as you are healing, right? Because there is going to be a lot of stuff that comes up here, right? As we start delving into shadow work and a lot of it is not fun. A lot of it is not pretty. Um, you know, we can, we can, as we start going into the shadow work and dive deep diving into it, we can kind of uncover things that we thought were gone. <laughs> we know we thought we already moved on from it. We thought we were already healed from it, but the universe and, you know, spirit will kind of bring many of these things to the surface. As soon as we think we're good, we're fine. Guess what? There's another layer, right? Of, of feelings and emotions that have been hidden or ones that we've kind of purposely pushed away because they were uncomfortable to deal with at the time. So we had to really work towards, uh, trying to maybe stuff them away, right? I feel like we are definitely a generation of people who don't deal with our emotions, don't deal with our feelings. And we just, because we have a lot of pain, we repress them, right? A lot of repressed emotions. So yeah, I'm feeling like your higher self is really kind of encouraging you to, to spend some time, right? Have the courage to face those difficult feelings first off because shadow work is not easy, Okay, it is not easy, it is not fun, but if we're really wanting to 
release ourselves from the things that we're still holding on to, we have to be reflective. We have to look within ourselves, you know, to see how we are allowing our shadow to kind of overtake in, in some, in some ways, um, you know, our life or our decisions or the way in which we could connect with other people, right? We have guidance here. So for some of you, I feel like the guidance could be your higher self wanting you to not be afraid to ask for help, right? Especially if you're wanting to sit with like, say like a therapist or, you know, a counselor, a mentor, someone who's going to be able to guide you in a direction, right? And it can even be that you work towards connecting in with your higher self more, right? Setting intentions, maybe during meditation, so that you are able to move forward from these things from the past. And um, let's see, I, I feel like your higher self too, because the King of Cups is a really beautiful energy. It is an un energy of unconditional love, compassion, you know, uh, kindness, generosity, sensitivity, um, and, you know, self-love. And I feel like maybe this is the way your higher self is saying to really take some time to nurture yourself too, especially if there's inner childhood wounds, to take that time to really focus on nurturing yourself, right? And to me, the guidance can also be you going within, right? Your own guidance, your own intuition, setting, you know, connecting in with your higher self in order for you to be able to move forward, okay? Um, the intangible here, it says indeterminate, formless, and unknowable, right? And then we have these hands that are basically coming out of the heavens here or the sky, right? The clouds, and they're in this shape of a heart, right? So we have all of this energy, this beautiful light energy that's coming out of the clouds here, um, and I feel like this is also your higher self's way of saying, be open, right? Be open and receptive to the unconditional love that the universe does have for you. Be open to accepting and receiving that love and guidance from your higher self, right? Um, you also have the stone, the stone here. And the stone is... For those of you, I, I was kind of reading about this card here because I was like, what is this? What what does this even mean? Um, but the stone is an archetype in a way that stones have literally, if you think about it, and I know most people don't think about it, but stones are here on earth many, many generations that come and go, right? They're still here. You know, you could have a rock or a stone that's there that's been there for, you know, thousands and thousands of years. So the, st the energy of the stone or the archetype of the stone is one that is really talking about groundedness and presence, right? Presence here on earth. So I feel like your higher self is kind of, kind of giving, I feel like little hints here about ways in which you can approach healing the shadow, right? Like I said, first off, the strength card. Having uh, the courage to be able to face, right? Those difficult emotions, to face your fears, to face any type of uh, illusion, right? That you, that you keep yourself blocked with, right? Because the Seven of Cups can talk about fantasies, illusions, and sometimes delusions, right? Where we're not seeing things clearly, right? And that could totally be from things that we've had from our past, right? And then, you know, these shadow parts of us that are manifesting into our life because of a feeling of lack, right? Not having enough, not feeling like we are enough, right? Or like I said, for some of you going through abandonment, for some of you, it can even stem from a scarcity mindset, right? The strength energy to me is a lot of solar plexus energy. So that can be really working on your solar plexus chakra, your confidence within yourself, right? The king of cups to me is also, you know, the uh, heart chakra, as well as the sacral. Okay. Um, so the stone is another, I feel like a little clue here from your higher self that the way in which you can approach healing your shadow 
is to really ground yourself, ground your energy. And that could, because the stone is kind of a reflection of what it is to be still, quiet, calm, peaceful, right? If you think about, if you think about, you know, stones, rocks, things like that, they just are, right? In this moment, present, stillness, quiet. So it's kind of like your higher self in ways saying, be like a stone, right? Be like a stone. And when you are approaching your healing, your shadow work, right? You're doing your shadow work, that you are quiet, that you're calm, that you're reflective, right? And that may even really help, help you to open up to that guidance that your higher self is trying to bring in for you, right? Um, and then you also have treasure here. So this almost makes me feel like there's a lot, a lot to uncover, right? Which is, which is part of the process. It's just kind of going through this whole thing <laughs> where we are kind of uncovering so much there. So I feel like it's like your higher self is encouraging you to be open, right? To exploring all these parts of yourself, because when you're doing the shadow work, you uncover parts of yourself that you may have pushed away, right? So although, like I said, shadow work can be something that's challenging, triggering, painful, traumatic, you know, for some of you, especially bringing certain things up to the surface, but I feel like that this is your higher self's way of saying there's so much you are going to learn about yourself under uncovering treasure, right? Um, yeah, and to me, this is really about you being open to the love that your higher self, your spirit team is trying to give to you, right? Because it, this to me is also symbolic of you taking the time to really nurture yourself, right? Allow yourself here with this judgment card. Judgment is like a rebirth, right? It is, it is rising and Sometimes it can be that we are in this really dark place or we feel sad, we feel empty, we feel lost, we feel all these things, right? And like I said, the importance of it is looking back to the past, looking at our lessons, you know, holding forgiveness, forgiving ourselves, forgiving others so that we can be freed of it. And that's what that liberation is all about, freedom, right? Evolving, growing um, in a way, right? To close out cycles, Uh from the past. Okay. So let's see what else we have here. We have, look at that, letting go. And then you have move forward here, letting go. We have masculine energy. And then you also have discernment here. Okay. So I notice you have feminine here with the protective nest. And then you also have the masculine energy here as well, right? So for many of you, I feel like your higher self is letting you know that maybe there are some things within your shadow uh, that are surrounding a lot of masculine energy, right? And that doesn't necessarily have to be a father or a father figure. It can also be a male that you have within your life, right? It could be a spouse, a romantic partner. It could even be a wounded masculine energy within you, right? Maybe this is where your higher self is saying, start with the mass, start with the masculine, start with the feminine, right? Balancing out the masculine energy. Okay. And there are many different ways in which we can do that. If we think about the energy of the masculine, uh, the masculine energy within us is one that is, you know, all about taking action and, uh, planning strategy, focus, discipline, um, and, you know, more authoritative, like we're getting something done, right? We have, we have things that we want to create. And also the feminine energy here with the protective nest is, is nurturing, right? Loving, kind. So it could be that your higher self is saying here, maybe start within healing, maybe some wounds that you have around the masculine energy, whether it is a father, a father figure, or even a painful uh, situation that you've had with a male figure in your life, or even in ways in which uh, your shadow could have been affected by a wounded masculine energy within you, right? Where you felt like you 
couldn't achieve certain things. You couldn't take action. And especially with you having the five of pentacles here, a five of pentacles is the energy of lack, scarcity type of mindset, right? Whether it's money that we don't have, or it is relationship where we feel that void and that emptiness, right? The you kind of working on the masculine energy is going to be you kind of being in control of changing this, right? That you feel confident enough in yourself. Again, to me, this is a lot of solar plexus energy, right? Working on your confidence, working on your power and being able to say, you know what? I don't have to think like this anymore, right? I don't have to think in this five of pentacles type of energy anymore. I'm confident enough in myself to know and assertiveness, right? Also with the masculine energy to be able to take the lead, right? To me, this king of cups is also this reflection of emotional uh, maturity, right? You learning how to mature emotionally, which is also something that your higher self is wanting. Maybe that is the key for you, pile two, you know, with healing uh, the shadow. Um, we also have discernment here as well, you know, and I'm noticing that there is this little black bird here. Here in the letting go, there is both the shadow and the light here to me, but then the discernment to me is the shadow the shadow aspect of that little bird is sitting on the branch by himself. So it makes me feel, I don't know, to me around this little bird, it looks like these are a bunch of little raindrops in a way, right? So I almost feel like being more reflective because sometimes, you know, the shadow, like I said in the beginning, uh, the intro, the shadow can brain can maybe even deceive us in a way right and that may be with the seven of cups here how this maybe the shadow can keep us in an illusion right and and in a way this is where your higher self is saying being just be discerning right because sometimes that shadow when it's out of balance right it can make us see things not clearly right and that is where the importance of balancing out your own energy is going to be helpful here so that you can work towards letting go to bring this balance between the shadow and the light energies uh, within you. Okay. So we have endings and beginnings. We have awakened creativity, which to me is the feminine energy. Okay. Working on healing the feminine. We have, look at that, forgiveness. And we have focus and discipline, which is the masculine energy. Okay, so yeah, to me, this is like, maybe this is your higher self's way of saying ways in which the approach, right? We've got stillness here, quiet, calm, peaceful, right? Forgiveness here with release, right? Letting go of the pains, the burdens, the heaviness, maybe working on empowering that masculine energy, right? Of course, be discerning because the shadow can kind of right? Lead us into a direction we don't want to be with the way in which we express certain things. To me, this endings and beginnings is you bringing this to an end. You bring this cycle to an end, right? We have the number 10 here with move forward, right? So this is basically your higher self saying you cannot bring this with you, right? You cannot bring it with you. This is where you release it. This is where you are reborn in a sense, right? It's time for a new start. It's time for a new beginning, right? We have awakened creativity to me and you have focus and discipline. Again, you have feminine, masculine, right? Masculine, feminine. So yeah, I feel like to me, this is like this kind of a uh, way in which your higher self is saying to approach, to heal the shadow, right? Where you gain more confidence in yourself, you're more nurturing towards the self, and healing any of this type of lack mentality that a lot of those shadow aspects of yourself may kind of surface within your life. You're discerning with them, right? Does this, does this feel like it resonates any longer, right? This type of feeling or this energy that I'm holding on to, right? So learning to really focus on that. And like I said, being open to the guidance, right? When you are, let's just say meditating, when you are in quiet reflection, right? We all have a shadow. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to, you know, try to push away and pretend like it's not there. We all have one. We all have one to work on and to bring and shed light upon and bring balance to that, right? But I feel like 
your higher self saying is that a lot of the key of that is holding on or letting go of you know the things that you have from the past with forgiveness so that you can be freed from them released from them and that doesn't have to be your story any longer right it can really help you to face a lot of those shadows those inner demons right that we're trying to keep at bay and really kind of release them so that we are able to move forward right and through that process you're uncovering treasure, right? You're uncovering parts of yourself that you didn't even know existed, right? Especially if you have, and you're aware that I'm not someone who's very focused. I'm not someone who's very disciplined or, you know, I'm not very assertive, right? You start working on that masculine energy and it's like you start to see like, wow, I really can get things done. You know, I really can nurture myself. I really am someone who's creative while working on the feminine. You uncover all of this beautiful treasure that lies within you through this process because you're learning who you are right through this process of deep diving into the self and facing the shadow right so it's a beautiful thing like i said yes it can be something that is painful you know it's not fun like i said sometimes but you know it's it's definitely worth it i feel like when you're on the other side of it and you commit yourself you dedicate yourself to you right? Your growing, your uh, evolution, right? Can be beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to leave it here for you. Pile number two. I hope this was helpful for you guys and we'll see you in the next reading. Hi, pile three. So for those of you that resonated with the dream card, this is going to be your reading today. And so we're asking spirit today, what are your higher self's messages to you on healing uh, your shadow. So we're going to look at your tarot first, and then we will go into your oracle. So we have the seven of wands. We have the nine of cups. We have the nine of swords. The nine of wands. Okay, so there's some wounded energy here and then we also have the action of coins which is the knight of pentacles okay so um kind of like i was saying in the intro the shadow can you know manifest in many different ways with many different negative qualities um, into our life all of which can affect us in the way that we think the way that we act speak with our, within ourselves towards other people it can definitely be something that affects our connections, right? Romantic uh, family situations or, you know, just or you know, with other people. Okay. So I want to look, but I've already seen here with the seven of wands. To me, um, with this, what your higher self is saying about healing your shadow. Some of you with the seven of wands that chose this could be very, maybe very defensive. Okay. I'm also seeing there's a lot of wounded energy here with the nine of wands. So sometimes this can be that we come across as maybe guarded and also very defensive. Uh, the nine of swords is also fear, anxiety, worrying, right? Um, and so we'll talk about the knight of pentacles and also the nine of cups here as well. And I almost feel like in a way, this is your higher self's way of saying that the defensiveness and the wounds from your past, maybe from things you've gone through, and the anxiety that you feel about future, right? Maybe making decisions, or even if you are someone who gets very anxious, it could be manifesting as maybe even anger with that seven of wands of a need to just kind of protect the self because you have some wounds that are here. Um, and I feel like this in, in a way with the nine of cups energy here is kind of like blocking out your ability to feel happy in your life and uh, fulfilled okay um, so we'll kind of see how I feel like this approach here with the knight of pentacles is about slow and steady movement progress moving forward right but at least as long as we keep ourselves committed to actively reflecting within the self right and taking notice where yes there are wounds that are here Yes, we may get defensive at times because of the things that we may be kind of triggered by. But the Seven of Wands is also about perseverance, right? The Nine of Wands is about resilience. So even if we are someone who has gone through 
and challenging situations in our past, whether in our childhood stuff or just from the experiences that we've had in life with other people, right? That we don't give up on ourselves, right? We don't give up on facing those aspects of ourself that need healing. Okay, so let's see. Let's do this one here. Okay, so we have card number 16 with the dandelion with uh, detox. Okay. And dandelion can be something that is also very calming. And I'm seeing in this here, we have intestines, right? Calming. So some of you, this can even be manifesting into, you know, the body, things like that. I'm not going to get into the whole health thing about this. But yeah, to me, we have the intestines that are here. Um, and so maybe this can be kind of manifesting in a way that it's affecting your health, okay, because of that nine of swords too, right? Anxiety, fears, worries. Maybe you're someone who, if you get kind of angry or upset, it, it's almost like in a way your higher self is saying the your past, like your inner childhood stuff, or even some of the things that you've gone through have may have been something that affected you health wise. And maybe for some of you, this is intestinal, maybe even like stomach issues, allergies, um, you know, things of that nature. And so to me, maybe dandelion is something that your higher self is, is saying would be maybe beneficial for you to look into, to do some research with, um, I don't know. It just makes me feel like for some of you, there is this um, almost like this fight or flight energy of just kind of constantly feeling like you need to be on guard, you know, defensive, protective because of the things that you've gone through in your past. It's kind of making me this, feel, feel this. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's do this one here. We have receive your blessings. So yeah, to me in a way, we've got receive your blessings here. You have dream and then you also have the nine of cups. So in a way, I almost feel like your higher self is letting you know that, you know, working towards healing your shadow is going to be something that's going to help you to remove the blockages in your life to you receiving the blessings. I feel like that you're truly uh, meant to have. Where is the... Your card at okay so we have we have the gift here the gift I want this one here we have withdrawal symptoms it says the yearning craving pain over loss pain over loss so some of you this could even be uh, maybe there was somebody very important to you that you did lose in your life maybe this could have been someone who passed away it could have been someone that you ended a connection with, a friendship, a relationship, some type of loss that you may have experienced. And like I said, for some of you, I kind of feel like this is something that's really affecting you, maybe even internally, manifesting as um, illness for some of you in the body, right? Mm, okay. So we also have the bridge. Yeah, it almost makes me feel like it's, it's like if there's some type of loss that you've experienced in your life, some type of pain, something maybe even for some of you very traumatic, you know, a lot of that stored energy that we have in the body through trauma, the body holds on to all of that, right? And it is going to manifest as dece disease um, within us, okay? And that could be something like I said for some of you that's affecting you this way as well maybe not necessarily the intestines and things like that but maybe something internally um it just yeah it just kind of makes me feel like your 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 higher self is saying that the wounds that are here are have affected you within the body right within the body um, so before we go into these, let's just talk about this a little bit more. So, yeah, I, I'm just kind of feeling like with the Knight of Pentacles energy here, I, uh, the Knight of Pentacles is about slow 
steady, progressive movement forward. It's about us keeping our committed and dedicated. And I feel like that is what your higher self is saying is that even though you may take a little bit of a slow and steady approach to focusing and healing the shadow, understand that it is something that is very possible for you because sometimes we can, you know, not even acknowledge the shadow, right? We don't reflect. We don't, we have no self-awareness. We don't see how, you know, this situation or this thing that we've gone through in our life can really affect us, you know, within the body, how it can affect maybe, like I said, for some of you, anxiety levels, making you feel very defensive, right? Or hurt or, um, Maybe even boundaries, right? If you're someone who crosses boundaries that other people have placed, or if you're someone who has, who needs to set boundaries. But I feel like your higher self here is wanting you in a way to work towards healing the shadow is for you to really stay committed, dedicated to slow and steady, progressive movement forward, right? Versus just giving up and saying, okay, you know what, forget it. I'm not even going to focus on healing the shadow at all. I don't even acknowledge that it's there. I have no reflection within myself to acknowledge how my shadow is affecting my life. And that's kind of what I feel is that because of the withdrawal symptoms here, the yearning, the craving or pain over loss, it's like you're, you're almost like in a way your soul is craving for something more deeper, um, I definitely feel like with the nine of ones being here, you've definitely gone through it. You may have encountered a lot of very challenging things, especially with that seven of wands and the nine of wands here. The seven of wands can be about adversity, right? Challenges that we face and us really kind of standing our ground with the ability to fight and move past them. So that's what kind of I'm, I'm feeling for some of you. It's like this fight or flight energy. Which, which does manifest as anxiety, fears, right? About doing things, getting things done for some of you. Um, and with the ability to dream here, it's like there's, I don't know, it almost makes me feel like, like this, there's lack of happiness or lack of fulfillment that you might find within your life. But your higher self is wanting you to kind of recognize that how by you really looking within yourself, to work towards the healing that this is going to be something that helps you to put this behind you so that you can really get to focusing on manifesting, I feel like, within your life to make your dreams come true, right? So that you are able to move uh, past the, move beyond the past. I'll say move past the past, but move beyond the past. And mm, what else am I seeing here? Yeah, I feel like with the receive your blessings here, it's like your higher self is saying we have to we have to work on the shadow. We have to face that, right? And sometimes with the, the nine of swords, you see like this little spider that's kind of coming down over here. And she's got this little evil eye little necklace on too. So to me, there are maybe some irrational fears. You know, if it's manifesting as anxiety for you, that is causing stomach upset or just kind of like something going on within the body, right? Um, I am feeling a little bit of just feeling a little maybe angry for some of you or def like uh, defensive, you know, because there could be certain things that are creating these fears. But as a result of that, it's kind of like a maladaptive way of coping to some type of loss that you've experienced um, in your past. And so I feel like your higher self, it maybe for some of you, it is needing a detox. Maybe it is a need for kind of taking a look at who uh, is is in your life, right? And, and pay attention to how your body feels around that specific person, if it's one person. And pay attention, you know, really just kind of like go and go within and, and listen to what your body is telling you, right? Um, let's see. The bridge is also this this card here of, of acceptance, right? 
uh, accepting something from others. And I feel like or even what your higher self is trying to give to you. And we have the gift here. So this, I feel like for some of you, there is this, I feel like other people that are in your life that could be offering something to you in a way that this is lessons, right? Lessons that you are being challenged by everything that is being given to you, everything that you're going through is for a reason, right? Challenging you, I feel like in a way to become uh, a better version of the self. But this card here is also about us being open to maybe help from others or opinions from other people that could really be something to help us to move beyond the shadow some of the shadow and way the way the way it's uh, manifesting into the life because this is about accepting acceptance um, versus withdrawal, separating ourselves from other people, and saying no because of fears, because of pain that we've experienced in the past. Um, So this is also, in a way, your higher self saying to find this connection between disconnected parts of your life, meaning your relationships, your own beliefs, your own ideas, ideals, right? Your history, your past, and how you can bridge those things together, right? For some of you, we can even be noticing a pattern of things that you go through or things that happen and you kind of pull all these things together. And I feel like that in way with the gift here is like spirit saying your higher self. It's like these things I feel like are teaching you. Yes. I'm feeling like definitely your pile is something that is very challenging Right, But I definitely feel like the things that you've gone through are definitely teaching you something. So when the bridge is in its, let's just say, shadow, dark phase, it's talking about us lacking boundaries, forcing connections with people. That could be forcing friendships, forcing romantic relationships. And it could be, like I was saying earlier with the Seven of Wands, boundaries. Right, So it either it's either two things. It could either be that you are someone who, because of things that you've gone through in the past, you're not either paying attention to, say, like another person's boundaries, right? We have no awareness and we're not seeing how we're crossing lines or crossing boundaries because we're not being reflective. Or it could be that you are someone who allows other people to disrespect or kind of um, not pay attention to the boundaries that you've also set, right? So it's almost like in a way your higher self is wanting you to really, when doing your shadow work, to pay attention to how all these things, relationships, connections, pay attention. How are they connected? Right? How? Let's just say, how is the situation that you've gone through as a child? How is that mirrored to you? Maybe say at this point in your life right now, is it something that's happening over again? You know, because in a way, it's kind of like your higher self is saying, connect the dots, connect the dots here, you know, with how that can be something that will help you to give you clues as to how you can move beyond uh, a lot of the shadow and the way that it's manifesting into your life. And like I said, for many of you, to me, with the detox here and, you know, this, this uh, intestines showing here, it's like. This is something that is affecting you on, on a deeper level, right? Maybe, I don't know, that maybe this is digestive issues or upset. Or if you're someone who has, you know, uh, I don't know. That's just kind of what's making me feel like, like it's stored in the gut, right? The, the pain or the trauma or something here is stored in the gut. Um, the mind and the gut. 
the gut. Yeah, that's like a, an actual thing. We've got the nine of swords with the mind here. And then you have the gut, the intestines. So it makes me feel like this is something for some of you. And this is very specific, so it may not resonate for you, but I, I feel like maybe even do some research about mind and gut health. Okay, mind and gut health, which is an actual thing. Things that we go through affect and manifest in our way in the body. Okay. Um, yeah, and I feel like, like I said, your higher self is saying here, bridge these things, these lessons in a way. Um, together so you can help to kind of understand here so that you can basically with the receive your blessings here is to put this behind you to really work towards balancing the shadow facing your fears understanding that you are someone who is resilient and commit yourself and dedicate yourself to moving forward right what dreams do you have and and how are they not being realized are you not living to your say your fullest potential right it could even be that you're someone who yearns for what your dreams are right and instead of being able to just go out and get them or go out and chase them sometimes the shadow is something that keeps us held back right really depending on how we're letting it allowing it to kind of manifest into our life and so let's see and i feel like with the gift here it's like Although I will say, you know, shadow work is not the most fun because it really offers us a, a time to really reflect within ourselves to see, you know, how can I improve? How can I be better? How can I be more observant, more self-aware of my own patterns of behavior and they are, and how they are affecting my life, how they're affecting my romantic connections? how they're affecting my family relationships, how they're affecting friendships. Do we have a certain pattern of behavior that has impacted them? That's where I'm feeling like your higher self is saying, pay attention to how these things from your past, like how were, you know, like kind of just, like I said, connect the dots. It's kind of like in a way. So this is really like for your shadow work here, it can be that you take up journaling right? You're, you're, um, you actually sit down, I don't know, for maybe 30 minutes a day, an hour in a day, right? How did I feel triggered today? What is it that is bothering me today? Or, you know, was I angry today? Did I feel upset today? Did I feel anxious today? Did I, uh, did I take care of myself? Did I eat properly? Did I get enough sleep? Did I get enough rest? And just kind of pay attention to where your mind is at. Because to me, this is also a lot of worrying and overanalyzing things, overthinking things, right? Maybe worried about what other people think of us or, you know, just can go in so many different uh, directions with that. Um, okay, so let's get look a look at these other ones that we have here. We have anger. Okay, anger. We have omens. We also have, it's all good. It's all good. Ego death. Okay. We have a journey of solitude. Prisoner of the past. Okay. Prisoner of the past. And we have let love enter. Okay. Okay. So we have the prisoner of the past here. So this almost makes me feel like there are certain things that your higher self is saying that you're needing to work to release because these could be things that are kind of uh, making certain shadow aspects kind of lead maybe a little bit more prominently in your life, right? And we're, the, the goal for us is to find balance in the shadow. The shadow is never going to go away. It will always be there. It's a part of us, Right. But we can shed light on it. We can become more self-aware. And we can really bring that energy into balance. Now, we do have anger here, okay? So for some of you, it can be that maybe there is anger. Or maybe you are someone who has a lot of underlying anger. Maybe you're someone who lashes out. 
um, at people or somebody who maybe this is your higher self way or saying that there's anger deep down inside that is underlying with that shadow of yourself. Like I said, for some of you, that defensive energy, right? Deep down inside, are you angry? Maybe about some type of pain or loss that you've experienced in your life. And it is manifesting as anger, right? Maybe you have a certain way of talking or saying something, right? Uh, to people or to family members or to friends. And I feel like your higher self is saying here, maybe there is some underlying anger here. And in order to heal that anger, right, we have to reflect to our past. Are there things that we're holding on to here? We have let love enter. So in a way, love is what the way your higher self is saying to really work towards healing whatever this anger is for you. It's going to be different for all of you because it's a general reading. And then also the ego death, right? The death of the ego. Um, the ego can also be something, you know, that, that gets in the way, gets in the way of our life at times, right? Um, and so to me, this is you kind of, because the ego is also something, it's a, it's something that is very 3D, right? It's, it's a part of us being human. We all have an ego, right? And in a way, the ego death, I feel like, is, is a way to help you to step more into your spiritual energy. Because this is also something that we need to recognize is that we, yeah, we all have an ego, right? But the important part is that we're not allowing the ego to kind of take control. We bring that balance by bringing in the spiritual side, right, of our soul and who we are at our core, the authentic self, right? The ego is the false self, okay, in a way that we have created, okay? And for some of you, it can be, of course, based off of things that you've gone through in the past. And the journey of solitude to me, too, is also your higher self's way of saying, let's just say you are someone who's single, or you feel like right now, I don't have any friends, or I don't have a romantic partner, or I feel alone. Maybe this is your higher self say, ways of saying that this part of your life right now, maybe you are meant to be alone, maybe you are meant to be single, or that the journey of solitude is by you spending time in reflection and introspection to be able to move past this, you know, whatever this might be for you. And so with the omens here, to me, it's also about you paying attention to the signs, the synchronicities, the messages, and, and, and your higher self's guidance, right, that's going to help you to kind of move uh, beyond that, okay? And then you also have, what is that? It's all good with uh, card number 18. So I wanted to actually read the message um, this is from the shamanic healing cards that are here. I might also read the anger one here just to see if there's any other messages that might help you guys a little bit more. Okay, so with it's all good, it says, every experience you have in your lifetime has the potential to be a teaching tool. By remembering and embracing this idea, the situations you encounter become less fraught with unneeded emotion and drama. By not attaching labels or expectations to people and situations, you allow the pure divine energy to flow unimpeded. While you may have little control over what happens to you at times, you always have control over how you react, okay? And you have anger here, the defensiveness, the anxiety, the guarded, wounded energy here. Um... It says, do you react on an impulse, strike out at others? Well, when you feel hurt, do you crawl into your safe place when the world seems mean and hurtful? Face this challenge in your life head on. Be thankful for the opportunity to experience whatever it is that is happening. Set yourself a goal of learning from every situation in your life. Find that silver lining. It's there. So to me, that's also the gift, like in a way. Like I was saying here, the bridge, it's like we have two different people here. They're, they're giving each other something, right? So 
in a way, like I said, to me, it's like your higher self's way of saying bridge these things together, right? How are these things connected, related? How is a situation, let's just say that you're dealing with, let's just say you are in a relationship or you have a friendship right now that, that's coming to mind. How is that situation that you're going through currently right now being mirrored by something that you've had from the past. And if this is something that you notice is kind of like this repeated cycle in your life over and over again, open your eyes to that, right? Reflect upon that. See how working towards introspection, reflection, solitude, detox, how can we remove certain people, situations out of our life? How can we be more observant, right, of our own patterns of behavior, own ways of thinking, and how they are impacting our dreams for ourselves, and being able to accomplish that, right? Ego death is also something that happens through our awakening process and, you know, how we can I feel like let go of the old ways, right? The old self. And this can be, this is something that happens also to us throughout our whole life, right? Where we kind of have like this epiphany one day, this realization, the light bulb goes on like, oh my goodness, like I no longer am carrying around this thing from when I was six years old. I'm no longer holding on to this situation that happened to me when I was 21, right? Right? So to me, this is something that, you know, maybe if you're really taking a look at your own ego, right? The many facets of it, because we have many egos. It's not just, you know, singular. We have many egos that we have created based off of our connections with others, right? We have our, a part of us that is, you know, the false self towards this group of friends. And then we're a completely different person when we've created another ego for, this set of friends over here, right? It's like we have these many false masks that we wear. And so I feel like for many of you, your higher self is saying to really kind of take a look, right? At how the ego may also be the impacting you, especially with fear, right? Fear is, fear, doubt is a very ego based, ego way of, um, you know, looking at something, it's like the ego just brings in a lot of that fears, a lot of the doubts that we have within ourselves, And so this kind of in a way is, I feel like the way that your higher self is saying to approach, maybe approach your healing or shadow work, right? Also paying attention, right? To how, you, like I said, go inside in a way that you are paying attention to how your body feels, right? Around a certain person, right? Let's just say that you're around somebody and you feel drained, you feel exhausted, you feel, maybe you feel angry. Maybe you feel upset. Maybe you feel resentful. Um, and maybe because of that, right, you lash out, right? You lash out. And so, yeah, I'm just kind of really feeling where this is your higher self saying to kind of be reflective of how this is affecting you, right? On that level, is it affecting you? Do you feel like if you are someone who's incredibly anxious, right? You feel anxious and it affects your ability to eat. Maybe you're someone who, because you feel anxious, like I can't eat right now. I feel too anxious. I feel too stressed out. I can't eat. Or you can be on the other side of that where you overeat because you're anxious. And I've been there too. More so using food as like comfort. Like I feel anxious right now. I need to eat something. Um, or you could be someone who kind of, you know, does something else, you know, as a way, as a way for that. But yeah, I, I feel like, you know, the most important part of this, I feel like with the healing, the shadow is to be honest with ourself, be honest with ourselves, because otherwise, you know, what's the whole point of, of doing the shadow work? If we're going to say, you know, especially if we listen to other people, like if you have friends or family members that are saying, hey, you know, I noticed this about your personality, or I noticed that there is this thing that you do every time I say this, or every time I say that, and you're not open to that, right? You just kind of try to deflect, or you're, you don't want to hear it, or <laughs> you just like kind of, 
gaslight and kind of turn it right back around to that person, right? If someone's expressing to you, hey, you know what? You made me feel hurt when you said this to me and you're just like, well, I don't do this or I don't, I don't, you know, you get what I'm saying. It's like, we have to just kind of take a pause, take a second, listen, right? To what another person is saying, right? Especially if it's something that's making us angry, instead of lashing out, instead of saying something smart back to a person or kind of acting in a very angry way or not respecting boundaries, whether people are not respecting ours or we're not respecting theirs, right? So be very reflective, be very honest, right, with ourselves, because that's the only real way we're going to be able to get the shadow work done. Like I said, it's not fun. It's uncomfortable, right? When you have someone tell you, hey, you're a really angry person or you're mean or you're, you know, it's like, we don't want to hear that. Of course, it hurts the ego, right? Our ego is becomes wounded, becomes bruised um, if we hear another person. So we have to be open to hearing it, right? Especially if you notice it's repeated, like this person says it, this person says it, you know, another person, and we can acknowledge that within ourselves. Okay, I am like this. I get it. Yes, I do have a tendency to get angry right away or to lash out at people, or I do feel very defensive, like I have to protect myself against someone who may direct anger at me. And it's because maybe deep down inside, I feel pain, right? So in order, yeah, in order for you to really kind of move beyond it, maybe it is taking a look at the ego and how it protects itself, right? Do we feel like we are someone who can become very defensive or very overanalyzing and reading into what people say, right? If somebody says something to us, and then we just kind of like, oh, well, I think the person said this, and they were really meaning this when they said that. And it's just like, we have to just stop. You know, we have to just stop. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like this is this is also, you know, it's a little more challenging, I feel like with for your energy pile number three, but it's not that you cannot move beyond this, right? Because there is yes, work to do. We have prisoner of the past here, the ego death, the journey of solitude, and allowing love to enter, right? Allowing uh, love to enter those parts of yourself that are feeling hurt, that are feeling pain, things from the past that you're still holding on to. Like I said, with the nine of wands energy here, you could have been someone who's gone through some really painful, challenging things, but this is also your house, higher self wanting you to know you're resilient, right? As long as you stay committed to movement forward and progressing, progressing, right? It doesn't have to be that your shadow is healed overnight, right? It takes years sometimes, right? A good portion of our lifetime to get to a place where we can say, okay, you know what? I have let go of the past. I have been able to move past it, right? But I feel like with the anger here and pain, loss, anger is maybe where you start, right? You start reflecting on what is it that I'm angry about, right? What do I feel sad about? What do I feel like loss for? Is there underlying anger there from something, whether it's from something you're currently going through or if it's from something from childhood, resentment that you're still holding on to, right? How can we release that so that you can? Because like I said, with the receive your blessings here, in a way your higher self is saying, you being able to clear and heal this will be something that will help open you up to the blessings that you're truly deserving of. It's almost like in a way, kind of face the shadow to get out of your own way, right? Um, for you to kind of open yourself up to dreaming and imagining a life that you truly want to create, right? To be able to live a life that is filled with fulfillment and happiness. And sometimes that is reflecting within ourself, being honest with ourself, right? Um, admitting, right? Being honest, like, hey, I am this type of person or I do these types of things. And I notice this about myself. So yeah, the most important part I feel like is self-reflection, which happens with that uh, journey of, of solitude, right? Dismantling the ego here. And, and it was a way, like I said, maybe many uh, facets of the ego that you have created in order to protect yourself, right? Protect yourself. And, you know, the way in which I feel like your higher self is saying to heal it is to let love to enter. Be open to receiving love. Be open to compassion towards yourself, towards other people, nurturing yourself, right? Nurturing your connections, your relationships, instead of feeling like you have to be on the defense, 
right? For those of you where there is a little bit of a defensive energy, right? Or underlying anger here, okay? So I'm going to leave it here for you. Pile number three, I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next reading.